Titans of the text field. This is Prof G, and we're going to learn a plethora of techniques to work with our text field, including how to control the keyboard, change the keyboard layout and buttons, turn off autocorrect, restrict keyboard input, force capitalization, intercept key presses, disable or enable user interface elements based on values in the text field, and we'll learn about the focus state Swift UI property wrapper. Big learning is our context. Let's take note. Now, when we finished off our last lesson, we set a bool to toggle the text field and button with our play again button. But for now, I want to remove the code from both of these buttons and we'll add it back when we're actually done with the game and we want to hide the text field and guess a letter button and show the play again button or vice versa. So in the button action for the guess a letter button, let's delete play again is hidden equals false. And in the button action for the another word button, let's delete play again is hidden equals true. Now let's build and run in the simulator so that we can show the keyboard and get a sense of the problems that we want to solve. So if I click in the text field, the keyboard shows up. And if yours isn't showing up in the simulator, just press Command K. Now we can see the emoji keyboard icon on the lower left, but we don't want emoji guesses as part of our game. So it'd be nice if we could get rid of that. And we can. And we also see that the first letter that we type is capitalized, which is nice, but it would be even nicer if all the letters that we typed were capitalized. Also look what's showing along the top of the keyboard. These are suggestions for autocorrect spell correction. So spell correction is on right now and we don't want that because this is one problem that can occur. If I type in the letter O and press return, spell correction autocorrect changes O to I and that's bad for a letter guessing game. So let's change all of these. We'll return to our code and to get rid of the emoji keyboard, underneath the text field, we can enter a new modifier, the dot keyboard type modifier. Now code completion says that this sets the keyboard type for the view. It accepts a UI keyboard type as a parameter. Press return to accept this and press a period in the parentheses. Code completion shows us lots of different types of keyboards decimals, email addresses, URLs. And while Apple has documentation that describes these keyboards, they don't actually show images of the keyboards. But there's a Medium post by a guy named Ryan MHP that shows all of these different types of iOS keyboards and describes them. You can find this if you search online for 12 shades of keyboard types in iOS. And we're gonna choose this one here, the ASCII capable one. It removes the emojis. But notice there are many other ones, including number pad, which is useful if you want your user to enter only numbers, phone pad, which has the extra characters for phone numbers, and it shows the letters that correspond to digits on the same keys. The email address keyboard has the at symbol and the period on the main keyboard to make it easier to enter email addresses. So feel free to explore these if you ever need to limit or make it easier for your user to enter a certain certain type of data in your app, but for now, we're going to go back and enter .ASCII capable. By the way, A-S-C-I-I -I is pronounced ASCII. It stands for the American Standard Code for Information Interchange. That's the OG standard for expressing characters you're most likely to find in Western language keyboards like English that use Latin letters. So highlight ASCII capable and press return. And now on the next line, let's add a modifier to disable autocorrection. Now that's going to be dot autocorrection disabled. Code completion says this accepts a bool, but that's actually optional. The default is to disable autocorrection if there's nothing between the parentheses. So press return and accept this. If you wanted to, you could enter true between the parentheses. False is actually the default state without the modifier. But if you had, say, a user selectable option, you could pass in a bool value to toggle between true or false. So now let's build and run and take a look at our changes. Click on the text field, again, Command K if the keyboard doesn't show up when you click. And hey, look at that, no emoji keyboard option and no autocorrect bar above the keyboard. Nice. Next, we'll try to set a modifier for auto capitalization. And we can do this, but it won't quite satisfy all of our situations. But we'll see how we can code a change to ensure that we enter nothing but capital letters. So first, the text modifier we're going to use next is dot text input auto capitalization. And code completion says this sets how often the shift key in the keyboard is automatically enabled. Ah, interesting. So it mentions the shift key here. That's going to be important for us. Now, it wants an input value named text auto capitalization. And as usual, it's okay if we don't know what those options are. Dot notation shows us the predefined options. There's never if you don't want any capitalization to be set by default. Sentences will turn on the shift key for capitalization after each sentence. Words will turn on the shift key after every word. We're going to select characters, which should turn on the shift key for every letter. Now press return to accept this. But as we'll see when we build and run, while the shift key stays down as we type different letters, the user can still press and turn off the shift key and enter a lowercase letter. So we want to only accept capital letters. Also, no numbers. We don't want any spaces in there. And we want to make sure that all letters 
that are entered are going to be capitalized. And to show you an extreme way of chesting edge cases, those cases that aren't very likely but they could possibly cause problems, even if we lock down our app, it's possible to exit the app, go into a different app like I've done here with contacts, I can highlight a block of text with numbers and spaces and lowercase letters, copy this, return to the app, paste this in, and I've just pasted in a whole bunch of text, including things that aren't at all capital letters. So when you perform quality assurance or QA testing, these are the kinds of edge cases that you want to test for to make sure that there are no non-standard ways to crash your app. Well, let's return to our code and code up a solution to answer all of these issues. Now, it would be nice if we could intercept each character as it was typed. This way we could make sure that we filter out the characters we don't want, making sure that we only get one letter at a time and that it's always capitalized. Well, we can intercept each keystroke in a text field by using the modifier called onChange. So if we enter this new modifier, dot onChange, code completion says that onChange will fire an action when a specific value changes. The first parameter of says that it needs to be equitable, but really what we're going to enter in here is the value that we want to watch for a change, and that's just going to be guest letter. That's the same variable that's attached to the text field, so whenever the text field changes, this modifier is going to fire some code. Now, where does that code go? That block of code goes in the next parameter, this part that says equitable arrow void. This looks like the notation we use for closures, and it is. So we're going to put an action in here, just like we put a button action in between curlies. So let's give this a try. Press return. And so for the of parameter, we're going to enter our guest letter variable, then tab over to the perform field. Now this is a closure, so if I press return, I get the trailing closure format that I like so much. But this says that it passes in a value called new value, and the scoop is for a text field, this is actually the same as our bound variable, which in our case is guest letter. So I can put an underscore in here since I don't really need it. If you left it as new value, your code isn't going to have an error in it, it's just going to create a new value constant that we don't need. So what do we do with this closure? Well, what we want to do is we want to trim out anything that's not a character. And to do this, we can use the special Apple method that we learned about in the previous lecture, trimming characters. But we're going to pass in a different character set. So here we're going to say guest letter equals guest letter dot trimming characters. Press return to accept this. And then we'll press dot to see all the different character sets. Now before what we did was we selected white spaces and new lines that filtered out the white spaces and new lines. And we see lots of different options in here. One of them is letters. So this filters out just letters. This will filter out everything that is a letter. So it will let through numbers, spaces, punctuation, special characters. Now that's interesting, but we want is actually the opposite of this. We want to filter out everything that's not a letter. Well, let's see what happens if we select letters in here. And if I build and run, we can see anything but a letter will be typed in. If I press letters on the keyboard, none get through, but I can press numbers, punctuation, a space. So how can we fix this to get the opposite of this? Well, we'll head back to our code, and if I enter dot inverted after the dot letters character set, Look at this. It's going to invert the character set to filter out everything except for letters. Press return to accept this. Now if I build and run, we can see we can enter letters, but if we try to enter in numbers, symbols, spaces, they don't get through. Excellent. Now the next thing we want to do is to grab the last character that was entered, and we learned how to do this in our prior lesson. Let's use guard let for this. So we can say guard let last care equals guest letter dot last else open and close curlies return inside. And if we get the last character, then let's assign that last character to the guest letter variable. So we'll say guest letter equals. And remember, we need to say string in parentheses last care. Remember, if we option click on last care to show its type, last care is a character type. And that's different from a string. If we option click on top of guest letter, we can see that is indeed a string. So now let's build and run, and we almost have what we want, but we've got one problem. I can still press to turn off the shift key and still get a lowercase letter in here, but we can force whatever's in guest a letter to be a capitalized letter. Here's how. Back in our code, just type dot uppercase after the string parentheses. This is a method. See the M and the open and close parens at the end, but there are no parameters for this method. Nothing inside those parentheses. And it's going to return an uppercase version of the string. So any single character we get will be uppercase. That's what we want. Press return to accept this build and run, and will you look at that? Even if we click off the shift key and try to type a lowercase letter, it turns into an uppercase letter. And you can even try to paste in that long address that we copied earlier from the contacts app. It just leaves the last letter in there, and that is capitalized. 
Perfect. Now, another thing I want to show you is I closed too early. Let me build and run again. In this app, the guess a letter button is enabled, even if there's no letter in there, meaning no guess in the text field. But what we want is we want the button to be disabled when there's no guess letter. No letter, you shouldn't be able to click guess a letter because there's nothing to guess. Well, we can do this pretty easily. Let's just head back into our code. And under the guess a letter button, this code here, we're going to add a new modifier. It's the dot disabled modifier. Now we can see in code completion, this accepts a bool, a true false value. And this is used to set a condition that controls whether the user can interact with the view. Or in other words, if it's true, the view will be disabled. If false, the view will be enabled. And our view here is the button. So press return to accept this. Now, when do we want to disable this button? Well, when we have nothing in the guest letter variable. So inside the parentheses, we could simply put guest letter dot count equals equals zero. That'll return a true or false, and it'll be true if guest letter has nothing in it, the guest letter dot count equals zero. But there's another property of any string we can use. We can simply say guest letter dot is empty. Code completion says this is a bool value that indicates whether a string has no characters in it. This is nice. Let's press return and use this option. So this code will now disable the button if guest letter has no characters in it, if it's empty. Otherwise, the button will be enabled. So let's build and run. And sweet Johnny Ive, will you look at that? Our guest a letter button starts out disabled because there's nothing inside the guest letter variable. It's all grayed out. But when we type a letter, the button's enabled, it turns green, backspace over the letter, the button is gray, indicating it's disabled. Fantastic! Now another thing we might like to do is to disable the return key in the keyboard if the guest letter field is empty. Unfortunately, this isn't easy to do in Swift UI. It's very easy to do in UI Kit. I suspect in a future version of Swift UI, Apple's going to provide a way to detect if nothing's in a text field and then disable the return key automatically. But for now in our code, what we're going to do in this app is we're just going to ignore any input that's the empty string that would result in the user just pressing return when nothing's inside the text field. But another thing that we might like to do is change the wording on the return button. So instead it says done, which is often used in apps where we're not really typing a return key or a line feed character. Instead, we're just indicating that we're done with a particular text entry process. So why don't we do that? Head back into our code and somewhere underneath the text field, we're going to enter a new modifier. I'm going to put mine right under the keyboard type modifier here since changing the return key is also associated with the keyboard. And I'm going to say dot submit label code completion says that it sets the submit label for the view. Not exactly clear, but trust me, this changes the return button on the keyboard when we use a text field. So press return to enter this. So I can press dot notation in here. We see lots of different options for different things that we can put into the label that usually says return on the return key. I'm going to select done, press return, accept this, build and run, and we get a done button in here in the keyboard instead of the word return. Nice. Now, one last thing we'd like to do to get our guess a letter functionality working with a great user interface is when the user presses the enabled guess a letter button, we should dismiss the keyboard. Right now, we can see that we're not doing that. Now, it's not super intuitive how to do this with SwiftUI, but once you learn the steps, they're easy to repeat. So let's learn those steps. SwiftUI's text field will show the keyboard automatically when activated. Now, when the user selects a text field, we say that this becomes the focus of the user input and the keyboard shows. But if we can turn off this focus or set the focus to false for the text field, then we dismiss the keyboard. And that's what we want to do when we click on the guess a letter button. Well, in order to work with focus, we need to create a variable prefaced by a special Swift UI property wrapper indicator. This is at focus state. So up here where we declare our variables, we'll add another one at focus state. That's upper camel case, capital F, capital S. And like our state variables, we're going to say that this is a private var. And we're going to name this text field is focused lower camel case. And we're not going to initialize this. We're just going to declare it as colon bool iOS is going to initialize this for us, depending on what it determines the focus state for the text field is. Now we're going to work with this in two locations in our code, but first in our text field, and it doesn't really matter where among the modifiers we do this, I'm going to put this right at the end. I'm going to say dot focused code completion says that this modifies the view by binding its focus state to the given Boolean state value. Now notice it says binding in there, and we know that that means add a dollar sign in front of the variable. That might not be obvious for this particular operation, but Xcode tells us explicitly, and if we forget to add the dollar sign, Xcode will offer to fix it for us. So if we press return to accept this, 
inside for our binding variable, we're going to say dollar sign text field is focused. So now this bool value is bound to the focused state of the text field. And we can turn off the focus state of the text field in the button by going inside the button's action for the guess a letter button and entering in simply text field is focused equals false. So now if we build and run, we can see that the done button on the keyboard dismisses the keyboard as usual, but now we can also enter values in the text field, click the guest a letter button, and look at that. The keyboard is dismissed by the button now as well. Swifter, you had lots of big learning, as well as some applied learning from our previous lessons. We worked with the keyboard type modifier and restricted our keyboard so that the user wasn't able to enter emojis. We disabled autocorrect with autocorrection disabled. We used the text input auto capitalization setting and set this to characters to enter capital letters by setting the shift key on by default. That wasn't enough though, so we also learned to use the dot uppercase string method to convert all letters in a string to uppercase characters. We learned to use the dot on change modifier to intercept keyboard presses. We used dot trimming characters method that we learned about in the previous lecture, but we applied it with dot letters and used the dot inverted option to make sure that we filtered out anything that was not a letter. We used dot disabled to turn the guess a letter button on or off, depending on whether or not there was a value in the text field. We used dot is empty as a shortcut to tell if a string had a zero length. We used the dot submit label to change the keyboard's return key to read done. And we learned about the focus state property wrapper and we use this to dismiss the keyboard when a button is pressed. Swifter, I hope you're feeling good about the skills you are gaining. There's more big learning to come. Keep hacking.